Hello, bonjour. As you may have noticed, I made a video to offer an introduction to pivot tables. And in that tutorial, I showed how pivot tables could be used to perform demographic analyses of fictitious student enrollment data. But in this video, I'll offer a complementary example that may be of more interest to my colleagues in the sciences. Uh, recently, I was asked by a colleague how Excel could be used to keep track of purchases of lab materials. Um, if you have a data range of purchases, including date of purchase, the purchaser, the vendor, uh, a description of what was purchased, total cost, and let's say the, the grant or the fund that you used to make that purchase, uh, a pivot tables can be used to easily find the total purchases made by each group member or by each vendor or according to different accounts and over different timelines. Uh, really useful. So for this application, the first step that I would recommend is converting your data range of purchase records to a formal data table. And I showed you how to do this in an earlier tutorial. It's as simple as positioning your cursor in the data range somewhere and then typing control T and then confirming the data range and that the table has headers. And Excel will instantly transform a data range into a formal data table. Uh, by doing this, any entries that you might add at the bottom of the table, so control down arrow to jump to the bottom, any uh, entries that you add at the bottom will instantly be pre-formatted and added as a record or a row within the table. At this point, it's equally easy to then add a pivot table that is linked to this data table. You just position the cursor within the data table and click on Insert Pivot Table. Excel will ask you if you want to add the pivot table to a new worksheet. Yes, please. Click yes, and now it takes you to the new, new sheet that contains the pivot table. Uh, on that sheet, you now have to identify the fields of interest to you, the fields that you want to use in the pivot table. So for this example, let's choose date and purchaser and the vendor and the cost and not the quarters or the years, but the funds. From here, you really have tremendous flexibility as to how you want to group and visualize all the purchase records so you can drag these fields around as you like, uh, changing the nature of the pivot table as you do so. Dates work well as a filter because it allows us to easily choose the timeline uh, over which we are summing expenses. Uh, regarding purchaser, vendor, and fund, uh, the way that we arrange these in rows or columns will change the look of the pivot table and the look of the report that we could generate. So to me, it makes sense to move fund over to columns and leave purchaser and vendor in the rows. And we can make it more obvious that the sums are referred to monetary values by changing the field settings sum is the correct operation to perform, but we want to format these numbers in accounting. And now they all look like dollar values. And just like that, we have a pivot table that allows us to generate custom expense reports. We can add a chart that represents the table by selecting any cell within the table and under pivot table analyze click on pivot chart. A clustered column is the appropriate format for what we want to show and this generates a chart that corresponds to the data floats over the cells and even comes with its own filter buttons. From here, we can apply filters at the column level uh, 
by clicking on the column label and selecting exactly all of the accounts that we want to show. For example, perhaps we only want to see expenses from our CIHR and NSERC grants. At the row level, if we want to focus on vendor rather than purchaser, we can go back to the field list and move the vendor field up above purchaser field. And this will rearrange the priority in which uh, these fields are shown in the rows. From here, we can even hide the purchaser information by collapsing the entire field. Now we just see a total by vendor. Now, if we know that we will often want to generate a different report for each account, uh, we might find it even easier to filter by columns uh, through the use of what's called a slicer. So if we click Pivot Table Analyze and insert Slicer, we can choose the fund as the field that will be shown in the slicer. And when we click OK, Excel generates a splash box that floats over the cells like the chart and it offers buttons that we can click to simply choose which account we want to view or if we click here uh, multiple accounts that we can view. For example now the chart shows all of the purchases made for each from each vendor uh, using CIHR and NSERC grants. If we want to use a slicer to control the vendor, that's also easily done by inserting a slicer and this time selecting vendor. So once again, this allows us to easily control and customize the report that we're viewing by selecting one or several different vendors. For the date filter, <clears throat> Excel offers a special kind of slicer that's even more useful. So if we click on this pivot table, then click pivot table analyze and insert timeline, Excel will ask us to select the field that corresponds to a date. In this case, there's only one and it generates another floating splash box uh, and we can easily determine the units of time that we're looking at either years, quarters, months, or days and from here with the click of a button we can focus in on one year's expenses or even several. Using these slicers together we could easily determine the amount of money we spent from our NSERT grant at, let's say, Fisher Sigma and, I don't know, BWR over the last six years. And of course, we could just as easily come up with any other combination of fields that's better suited to the financial reporting required, which is exactly the point of using pivot tables. And don't forget, since this pivot table is linked to a data table, not just a data range, I can add new entries as I make per new purchases, and the pivot table will automatically expand its data range. I just have to go back to the pivot table and click refresh from time to time to have it include the new values in the new entries.